Hello, hello, hello. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the Fab Fam House. I hope everyone is doing well and having an excellent, excellent day. Uh, cilantro and I are going to cook it up in the kitchen tonight. And we are going to make a version of homemade moon pies. It is going to be uh, a recipe that's kind of like a copycat of a moon pie. The best we can do, we're going to give it a shot. Yo, Q-Man, let's go. How's it going? So, let's hop in the kitchen here. Let's jump in and get started. Now, I will tell you, the dough for the moon pie crust <clears throat> had to set for an hour and chill in the fridge. So we had to pre-mix it up and couldn't show y'all how we mixed it. So I'd like to discuss that first before we start. In here is the dough for the moon pie, okay? This is what it looks like, kind of graham crackery looking. So... What we did with that is what I would want to discuss with you. So, um, in that dough is one and a half sticks of butter at room temperature, a fourth a cup of light brown sugar, a fourth of cup of cane syrup. We did not have any cane syrup, so we created our own syrup. And cilantro and I put two tablespoons of honey with two tablespoons of cane sugar, pure cane sugar, and mix them together and we replace the fourth of a cup with cane syrup with that. Then there is a fourth of a teaspoon of vanilla extract, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one and a fourth cup, um, <clears throat> which is about a sleeve of graham cracker crumbs. Three-fourths teaspoon of kosher salt, just, just regular like sea salt or something. A half a teaspoon of baking powder. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. A fourth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And two tablespoons of whole milk. And you take this and you mix it all together. You do your liquids and then add in your dries. And then you take the dough and continue to mix it until it's all together, okay? And then you can wrap it in plastic wrap once you've mixed it well. Or we put it in this bowl with a lid on it. And you let refrigerate it for up to an hour, okay? So that is the point we are at now. <clears throat> so now we have preheated our oven to 325 degrees. And we're going to start the process of making these. Good, uh, Cumin. I'm glad you're doing well. I am doing excellent, Cumin. I'm just uh, getting tired of this cold weather. I'm sure you've got plenty of that in Canada, though. Um, I heard certain areas have been really cold up there. So um, I'm sure that you're getting your fair share of that. I just don't like the cold weather. So I'm kind of over it. We've had a little snow, different stuff like that. Our wind is pretty rough here. So I'm kind of getting tired of that. But other than that, we're doing excellent. So let's get started on this. Um, what we um, are going to do is turn our chilled dough onto our lightly floured surface here. And this is just a mat. I got this for Christmas. And um, you can roll on it and stuff like that. So we're going to put the dough on this. And I've already let it sit out at room temperature 5 to 10 minutes like it said. And we're going to roll the dough until it's like a quarter inch thick. And we're going to cut out the cookie using a round like biscuit cutter. It says to use a three inch this is about a two and a half. These will be good size moon pies. And we're going to put the cookies on our cookie sheet that's prepared over here. That has our mat down. And then we are going to put them and bake them in the oven 10 to 12 minutes. And we are going to go from there. So what I'm going to do is probably take, I'm going to take my ring off here. And I'm going to take just a little bit of this dough out and work with it. Because you're going to notice that this dough is kind of stiff. Uh, cilantro mix this up and um, it's a little crumbly as you can might can see um, I don't know I, I don't think you can see but it, it did crumble a little bit here on the mat and um, it uh it's it's more crumbly because of the the graham crackers and stuff like that so I'm gonna try to work with this just a little bit and uh, it seems a little dry 
This is something new. We haven't tried this yet. It does smell really good. The smell actually reminds me of a moon pie. So I'm hoping that this turns out like we would like. So I'm just going to kind of push this out before I go rolling. Oh, you've had freezing rain too? Yuck. That is not good. This is kind of dry. I don't even know if it... I, I'm pretty sure the chilling is like any other cookie. The reason you chill dough before you cut it is it allows it to not spread much. But with this being a little bit drier dough, I don't even know if you need to chill it that long. It smells really good though. Okay, let's see what size this looks like. <clears throat> oh, that's good. Smells really nice, too. I like this. There's about the thickness and of the cut out there. And we're going to lay this on the mat. Hey, Alice! Happy Wednesday! Hope you're having a great day. Okay. Let's see if I can get this cut here. I'm going to spread these out just a little bit. And it'll require two cookies, obviously, per moon pie. Because you're going to, you know, make them like you would a an Oreo or something. So let's put this back together. I am wondering if it needs a little more liquid to it. It's a little more crumblier than I prefer. I'm going to try not to mess with it as much as it's crumbly. Kind of having a hard time here with that crumble. All right, we got enough on here to make three moon pies, so we're going to go on and put that in the oven. And we're going to cook these for 10 to 12 minutes. And um, they will be soft when we, we remove them, it says, from the oven. And we'll allow them to cool about 10 minutes until we can transfer them to a cooling rack. And they need to be completely cool before we add the cream and do the dipping stage of the moon pie. So um, once they've cooled, that's when we'll add the center filling. Oh, we'll be praying for you, Alice. I hope everything's okay. I th is it related to your headaches that you were telling me about, Alice? Oh, no, Alice, I didn't know that. I'm so sorry to hear that, Alice. We'll be praying for you. I hope everything's okay. Are they just wanting to kind of look at it and see how big it is and everything? All right, I'm going to keep doing this while those are in there. These smell good, though. This stuff does. Oh, 
Oh, that's good. I'm glad the doctor says that, Alice. That's really good. Let me get some more flour down. No problem, Alice. Keep us updated, even if you have to message me a Discord. If you want to private message me or something. Cilantro, we may want to add a little more liquid to this next time. It's really kind of dry. But you can smell the honey, too. It smells good. These turn out as well as they taste as well as they smell. They're easy to cut, that's for sure. really want to keep this floured. While we're waiting, I'll tell you a little bit about the moon pie. For you that don't know what a moon pie is, a moon pie is a, uh, you can Google it actually, it's a dessert. It's like a cake you would get, like Little Debbie cakes or something, but it comes wrapped up and it is got like these graham cracker sides and it has uh, marshmallow cream in the middle and it's dipped in like a chocolate that's the original moon pie and over the years there are many flavor moon pies there's like banana mint vanilla chocolate I mean I could go on and on they created more flavors um, the moon pie originated in Tennessee uh, the company itself if I remember right was uh Established in like 1917, I think, somewhere in there. And um, the, the origination of the moon pie was kind of interesting. Back in the day, we had a lot of coal mining in Tennessee. And a coal miner, had, this salesman came to this coal miner and tried to sell him something. And he had snacks and he was coming from this company. And the coal miner told the man that he would like a cookie snack big enough that it's it's the size of the moon and this salesman said okay and went back to the 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 place that he was selling for and told them that this coal miner wanted a snack the size of a moon so the guy said okay and they accepted the challenge and they made this cookie with cream in the center and dipped it in chocolate took it back to the coal miner and it was big enough that it filled up his lunch pail and they said here you go here's a cake the size of a moon and as history goes they say the rest is history after that that is where the moon pie originated and it caught on very quickly and i don't even know it was like in the 20s by the 20s 1920 somewhere in there I remember reading that the moon pie actually took off and they had to hire people to box moon pies and start shipping them. And a bakery in Chattanooga, Tennessee was who made the moon pie and was distributing them. And by the time World War II came around, moon pie had grown and moon pie shipped moon pies across the globe to where World War II was happening. And the Americans were, and they shipped them moon pies. And all of the veterans and the fighters over there in World War II ate moon pies. And they said it came back. It was a sensation after World War II. And the company grew and grew and grew and grew. And now, over 100 years later, moon pies are just 
They're originated here and they're still made here in Tennessee. And they are still really, really popular after all of these years. So there's just a little fun thing for you about the moon pie in case you didn't know. And uh, my family and I, we love to vacation up to the Smoky Mountains. It's one of our favorite vacation spots. And there's actually a moon pie store there we like to go in. It has a neat little informative video and it sells mini moon pies, regular ones, double stacked ones. They make all kinds, crispy ones. Um, and you can go in there and buy stuff. It's like a bookstore slash moon pie store. So it's really cool. I've been told you can go, I think it's in Chattanooga still. <clears throat> I've been told you can tour where the moon pie is made. Never done it though, but... Um, anyways, it's really cool. So there's your little bitty fun fact for the night about moon pies. And in the U and in the Tennessee area, because they originated here, the funny thing that everyone says here, um, and there's even songs about it, is the RC Cola and a moon pie. Because back in the day, especially during the war, people ate R drank RC Colas and ate moon pies. And my grandma and grandpa told me during the Great Depression, RC Colas and Moon Pies were cheap. So that's where it really took off and the RC Cola and the Moon Pie became a thing. All right. Checking on our Moon Pie stuff here. All right. <clears throat> yeah, they smell, the dough smells good. I just hate how it's crumbly. Yeah, that's how crumbly it was when I was making it. Yeah, I feel like it needs a little bit of more liquid of something, like a little more milk than, than they said or something. That's my opinion. Yeah, it didn't seem like it milked it a lot when I put the milk in it. it yeah, because what, it was like, what, two tablespoons of milk? Yeah. Tablespoons yeah. Of milk. It, like, it sucked into the dough. Might need three. These really aren't that hard to roll cilantro like we thought this dough would be. Good. It's kind of thin though, right? It's melted. You, you, okay. <laughs> now it says to cook these y'all 10 to 15 minutes. We're, I want to start off with the 10, closer to the 10. Because I don't want these to be too crispy. Because a moon pie is cakey. It is not crunchy. So I don't want these to turn out crunchy. They're not supposed to swell up too big. That's already kind of brown, I think. How many minutes is this? Ten. Do like another minute or two. I feel like it's it's not enough. Because it that one seems a little doughy. But I don't I know we don't want too much longer. Okay. All right. A couple of those I got a little too thick, but I think it'll be okay. You look around as thick as a moon pie. Yeah. It does mush back together well when I go to mush it back, but... It leaves behind a lot of crumbs. All right, let me wash my hands, y'all. I'm going to lay my headset down.
Let's go. Raid in the house. Let's go. K with the raid. Long time no CK. How are you doing, love? Welcome in, Raiders. Welcome in. Welcome in. Good to hear, Kay. We are making homemade moon pies. We are trying our spin on homemade moon pies. They smell delicious, and we hope they are delicious. <clears throat> yeah, and I don't like an RC Cola, so I won't have an RC Cola and a Moon Pie. I'm out of cheer wine, so no RC Cola and a cheer wine. So I guess I'll have some RC Cola and a sweet tea when we get done. I'm making homemade Moon Pies, Phoenix. We just had our first batch go in the oven, come out. They're cooling. Uh, this is the dough for our moon pies, and uh, we are cutting them out with a round cutter. Um, and this is what the, it looks like when we cut it out. And we're going to put it on a tray, which I'm doing right here. And we have like the even amount cut out, so there's a top and a bottom for our moon pie. If nobody is sure what a moon pie is, Google it, and you can see what a moon pie looks like when you buy it from the store. They originated in 1917 in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee here. So, uh, pretty awesome. So, we are cooking up some moon pies. Cilantro is going to put these in the oven, and we're going to put them on 11 minutes at 325. These are chocolate ones. These are chocolate ones we're making. We're dipping them in chocolate. Um, but my dad's favorite are banana. He loves banana moon pies. But my favorite is chocolate. And uh, I, I like the vanilla some. Vanilla ones? Vanilla ones? You got flour in your forehead. <laughs> making fun of me. I apparently have flour on my forehead. Well, you wouldn't dip them in chocolate because when you get a moon pie, the coating is what has the most flavor. It's in the dough, but it is in the dip too. So vanilla would be white chocolate and banana. You probably would put some vanilla extract in a white chocolate for the dip probably. Yes. I have cilantro for those of you coming in. Cilantro is helping me in the kitchen tonight. So I have cilantro with me. Shush, Brian. What does being short have to do with having flour on my head? Brian. All right. These are the ones. These are the ones cooling. They kind of don't look much different once they're out. They're just like a cookie form. Um, they have a soft texture a little bit to them. We're trying to find that sweet spot. This is the first time we've made these. We don't want them too done because moon pies are soft. So we are letting these cool. They're really hot. You want them to be cool because we have to put the marshmallow cream in the middle. Now, what we'll do next, once we can get these a little cool enough <clears throat> to actually put, uh, we, you just get some Jet Puff Marshmallow Cream is all you have to have, okay? We got some Jet Puff, or the generic is fine too. And you're going to put a little bit of dollop in the middle, and you're going to put the top on it, and you're just going to push it down to squish it down. And you want it to touch the edges without coming outside of the circle. 
Then we are going to, uh, once we do that, we're going to take our sandwiches and put them on a cookie sheet and we're going to put them in the freezer, okay? We're going to put them uh, in the freezer and we're going to chill them till we think that they're cool enough and set enough because you're trying to set this cream up a little bit. And then um, behind me on our stove, we have a double boiler that has got some chocolate melted in it. And we're going to dip it in chocolate. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, <clears throat> we're going to do like it is showed in the video. So we'll see if it works. But you take one fork and you put it into the cream and where you can hold the moon pie up directly like this. Then you dip it down in the chocolate and you take a spoon and pour it over it. And then you pull it out. And then you take this fork and push the moon pie off onto a sheet to cool. And then you chill them and let the chocolate set up for a minute. So we'll put them back in the freezer for a second. So uh, hopefully those will cool in a second. I may Let me just stick these in the freezer for just a second to try to chill them faster. Huh. No, I didn't see it, Phoenix. I did I didn't uh I haven't really looked in Liz's Discord in the recipes. Yeah, yeah, I know what it is. I know what dessert it is, Phoenix. I know which one you're talking about. It is a southern dessert. A lot of people like that. They say it's really good. It's like a chocolate cake or chocolate, isn't it? The one I've made is a chocolate cake. Okay, Brian. I'm I'm okay with the baby gate, okay? All right, let's see. I'm going to roll this out. This isn't rolling as easy as I would like because it's a little dry. All right, I'm going to put it close to the edge. All right. A soft tiramisu. You going to make up for lost time, Brian? I think you picked on me enough to last... For about two years, actually. Oh, I thought he had a pick on me, Ruff, to take his mind off of buying something else from QVC. Or is there anything to take his mind off that? He has auto buy enabled. Purchases one of everything. He's already got everything they sell. I could believe that. Ah, <laughs> good one, Cilantro. That, well, I appreciate it, Phoenix. That's really kind of you. I really appreciate you stopping in. Just cutting out the rest of these. How many uh, minutes do we have left, cilantro? Three. Three, okay. I know it's only been 11 minutes, because it's like an eternity for some reason. I know. Punch 
just seems too thin. I don't care what that thing says. I'm going to redo those. Okay. We had tacos for dinner tonight. I made ground beef or, you know, taco meat, black beans, some Mexican cheesy rice. We put all of our toppings on. We did soft tacos. Burning down the house. So would you like for me to burn the kitchen down, HB? Wendy's? What do you like from Wendy's? I like their nuggets. Somehow I need one more. I'm not you when you were little, HB, where you burnt the kitchen down. So I guess I know why you break FS22 servers now, uh, HB, because you have that destructo mindset. It started when you were young. You, you burnt the kitchen down. You were so wild that they left you at Disney World. So I kind of see where that's coming from. Okay, so I have, let me see what it says. We're going to do now. We're going to spoon some marshmallow cream onto the center of the cookies. We're going to top them with a second cookie and then press them down till it touches the edges. Place them on the cookie sheet and chill for in the freezer. Okay, so let's try this out. We have our marshmallow cream. Like I said, we have never made these before. I'm going to dip some out. I got like a tablespoon here. Let's see if I can get it out. Like this. I, wanna, I think I need a little more. Like half a tablespoon maybe. Okay. I'm going to take the other one and it says to just kind of move it around, push it till it comes to the edges. So I've made it come to the edges. Now I'm going to put it on this tiny cookie sheet. I have an old like top here and I'm going to set them on here and we're going to set them in the freezer and let the cream set up a little bit in them so we can dip these in chocolate. Let's see if I can scoop this out. There we go. Put it down. Twist it here. Spread it around. Now, we have three moon pies on here, and I'm going to set these back in the freezer. And we're going to see if we can get that marshmallow cream to set up. Yeah, I do cake decorating, uh, Phoenix. I'm a cake decorator, and so I have a ton of piping bags. And I thought about that, but you know what? I don't. I, I get so tired of putting all the stuff in the piping bags to decorate with and then clean it up. 
I thought in this scenario, like the recipe said, I would just scoop it out because all I'm doing is mushing it down and it doesn't have to be real decorative, you know, or anything. It's more effort to put in the piping bag. So I just thought it was a little easier to scoop it out. It's not too bad. Hello, this is Cilantro. This is a PSA for everyone in chat. Brian stinks. Sharemark Gaming BC, I know you're in chat. You smell bad. Well, I'm pretty sure. Yep, that's all the dough. We got some scraps here, so we can probably like, maybe with the scraps we can maybe make like two. Cookies. Use the scraps. Those, that's so dry. What's left? Maybe we can make like one cookie and then just try it without putting anything on it and be like, hmm, what the cookie tastes like? Howdy, Frank. Hi, Frank. How you doing, Frank? Hope you're doing well. Well, I put the uh, the cookies in the freezer. We're going to let them sit in there probably like maybe like five minutes or so. Maybe until the cookies that mom just put in the oven are done. And then we'll take them out. And as mom said, we got some chocolate that's been melting on the uh, the stove over here. And we'll uh, we'll dip the cookies in that. Doing good? I was pretty well, Frank. I mean, we're all achy, you know, cold weather and everything, but we're good. Main bad thing is we just have, we've all been having bad allergies. I think that comes with living in the South, though. Bad allergies are, are just like something that comes with living here. I don't know. I don't imagine you'd probably leave them in there too long because it doesn't take marshmallow too long to to get uh, stiff from being cold. How long have those been in there? Like three minutes? Okay. I don't know. Maybe we'll wait like until that says like five minutes or something and maybe take them out. And check them.
Well, hope everybody's had a good week so far. Trying to ease the quiet in the air since we have to wait for these cookies to cook in the oven and the other cookies to cook in the freezer. I mean, not cook, cool. Cookies don't cook in the freezer. Oh. It's a smiley face. You see a smiley face? You little, you little smiley face. Here's our chocolate. It's not very hot. It's so, it's so not hot I could stick my finger in it and it wouldn't burn me. It's warm though. It's warm. Yeah. You, uh... Traditionally, when you make chocolate like this, you either... Some people, um... Either, like, take a big metal bowl and they mix chocolate over uh, boiling water in, in like, a, a metal pan. Or you do like we do and you get a double boiler, which is you put the chocolate and some paraffin wax in the top. And then in the bottom you have your water. So that way the water boils here and then the chocolate melts up here. So that way the chocolate doesn't scorch. If, as if you were just putting chocolate on the heat directly. This is how you make uh, chocolate cover things. Like uh, um, peanut butter balls. Or Buckeyes as others some people call them. But I hear we call them uh, peanut butter balls. Are they not set up yet? No. New job's doing good? That's good, Phoenix. I'm glad to hear that. Those are still hot? Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. I'm sitting here pointing at things, and y'all can't even see what I'm pointing at. It's, it's like it's right over there. It's like there's cookies on a, on a cooling rack, like right over there. That's what I'm pointing at. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Phoenix. I know there's been a couple people in our chat that have started new jobs recently. Either that or started a, a new shift at the same job they've been working at. I bet Brian's asleep. What do you bet Brian's asleep? Hmm? Eating. Or he's eating? Yeah. Maybe he fell asleep while he was eating. <laughs> Just imagining Brian, hoagie in hands, falls asleep. The, the freaking sub just comes apart all over his lap. I don't know what he what he'd be eating right now. Garlic knots, maybe. I don't know. Based off his eating habits, I feel like he's probably eating like maybe a a sub sandwich right now, or uh, maybe he's eating some pizza. How's the weather here? Cold. It's cold. Like. You don't have to, okay. Well, I'm guessing it's it's probably like it's probably like uh like yeah, like it's probably like twenty three or twenty two outside right now with wind. I'm not cold yet, luckily, because 
the oven is on, so it's making the kitchen very warm. But I imagine if I went outside right now, I'd go get cold and then come back in here and get warm. It's so cold right now that if it's if it snowed, it'd probably stick. But we're probably not going to get any snow anytime soon again. I was disappointed by the last snow. Everybody in our area was gossiping about the snow, being like, Man, I hear we're supposed to get 10 inches. Some people saying we're supposed to get 14. Some people said maybe 12. We didn't get that much. We probably got like maybe 4 or 5 inches. Yeah. The, the temperature's been pretty steady here. It'll, uh... Get to like maybe like 20 something or a little lower at night now. And then during the day, sometimes it'll get to like 40 something, maybe 50 something. You got four inches there? Okay. That's not that bad. I wish we just like out of nowhere, the, the weather couldn't predict it. We just get like. Like, 14 inches of snow out of nowhere. I've never seen that much snow in my entire life. So it'd be a, it'd be a surprise for me. Oh. Mom got the cookies out of the freezer. It's 23 there now? It's probably around what it is in here now. Ooh, yep, that's nice and set. As you can see, the marshmallow is set. So Mom can put the fork inside the cookie. She's getting a spoon so she can spoon the chocolate over it. There she goes, dipping the cookie in there, coating our homemade moon pie and chocolate. What's peeling? The chocolate peeled off the back. Oh, I don't know. You say that till you have to shovel it? Oh, we won't shovel anything. We'll just stay inside. Hang on, let me get the cookies out of the oven. Yeah, since I live in Tennessee, Phoenix, um, yeah, I told you have to get food. True. I did say out of nowhere. I didn't say I'd, uh, so we wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have prepped for the snow. Yeah. Yep. Like mom said, if you're living a dead end road, you just can't get out. Yep. We connect to a main road, so the main road salted, but you have a snow blower and only use it once. Oop, yep, there's the uh, the moon pies that have been coated in our chocolate. You're in Colorado? Ooh. Yeah, I can understand having like a snow blower and travels up there. I think I said it yesterday, Phoenix, but we have someone who used to come and chat a lot. Um, he lives in Colorado. Those look good. They do look good. I can't wait for them to chill. And then, uh, we'll yeah, we'll try one out. I imagine they're going to be messy to eat. We're probably going to get chocolate all over our fingers, but. Okay, go set the back over there. These are almost room temperature. Ooh.
It's not really how much it snows, it's the snow drifts that get you. Hmm. I don't know if I've exactly experienced a snow drift being out here. Where I live, if it snows more than like six or seven inches and the, and the roads are covered, we just don't go out. We're just stuck inside for like until the, the snow melts. And the most snow that I know we've gotten since I've been born is probably like maybe like seven or eight inches. I've never seen more than a foot in my entire life. Well, technically, I've seen it. Like, I've seen TV shows and stuff, but I've never experienced it. Our house faces the north, so it's easy. Uh, it's easily can be three feet. It's a pretty good day of snow in Michigan. Is that in Michigan? Yes. Okay. Oh, I got the mic cut. Got the mic caught in the table. Three feet of snow. That's a lot. I couldn't imagine that much. I'm cool with like maybe a foot. That that'd be too much for our dog to go out in. You, we would throw the dog down in the snow and he could boof and he'd just be in the snow. He wouldn't be able to go anywhere. <laughs> could you imagine that? Us going outside and we just plop cash in the snow and he's boof and just lands out there. That'd be pretty funny. Those feel kind of set up? Yeah. Okay. We're going to try one. You need a shovel or snowblow pads for the dogs. They like it. Well, we don't have a snow shovel or a snowblower, so we'd be in trouble. They don't even really sell them in Tennessee here. No. No. We never I, get snow here. I can't remember a time I went to a, like uh, a home improvement store or something and and they've had a shovel, a snow shovel or a snow blower. Okay, there's our homemade moon pie. Mom just got it out of the freezer. What is Cash again? He's our little dog. Um, if you join the Discord, Phoenix, there is a mom's taking a bite at the moon pie. Oh, is it good? Is it good? Mom, mom laid her head back. But um, if you join the Discord, Phoenix, we have a pets channel in there, animal pictures. And uh, there's a picture of him. Uh, that's the only picture I've posted, animal pictures, that I posted. So if you look for Cilantro West in the animal pictures, I've posted a picture of him. He's a Pouchon, which is a uh, Bichon Frise. And poodle uh, mix. He's a mix with a Bichon Frise and a miniature poodle. So he's super cute. And there's the moon pie. Incoming moon pie. Incoming moon pie. Oh my god, mom. Can I have a bite? Delicious. It's delicious. Ooh boy, I'm I'm excited. Oh my god. Everyone, these moon pies are wonderful. These homemade moon pies. I will tell you, they do not taste like what a moon pie does. It's a little bit crunchier. But these are good. I actually, Ruff can justify because Ruff and I had this discussion about how moon pies don't taste like they used to. Ruff, I think if you tried this, they you would really like these. They are really good. Here is a picture of our mutilated moon pie. Um, I think the honey and the graham crackers really add a touch to it. Um, the chocolate dipped it is really, really good. I'm really impressed with this. It turned out really well. Hey, Tiger. How are you? Hope you're well. Frank's happy as a hog in a mud hole. I highly recommend these. 
Dad doesn't even eat moon pies. He doesn't like marshmallow, remember? Well, he can sneak Well, Dad smelled that. I think that, like me and Ruff were talking about, the moon pie uh, kind of tastes like a banana or something. All of them taste kind of banana, you know. It's just different, but I have got to say, I recommend this. The recipe will go in the Discord under the recipe channel of our Discord. You can find the recipes under there. I will add this one to the recipe list. I hope you guys enjoyed the cooking tonight with cilantro and I in the kitchen. Pictures will go on our Instagram. Follow us on Instagram to see pictures from tonight's cooking stream. And um, go to the Discord and pictures in the food channel. I agree, Tiger. I even think Coke's, they say they still have the same recipe because we went to the Coke place in Atlanta, Georgia and toured it. <clears throat> I agree. I think... Even Coke tastes different. I don't care if they say it's the same recipe. It tastes different than what I ate as a kid. The only way Jeffro eats a marshmallow rough is if I make Rice Krispie treats. Like, because that's a little different consistency and he will eat those. Alright guys, please stick around. We're going to go over and raid our old buddy Red Dirt Ranch. He is a really, really cool and nice guy. He streams FS22. Thanks for stopping in. Come back and see good old cilantro tomorrow.